U.S. President Joe Biden, on Friday, May 31st, laid out what he described as a three-phase Israeli proposal for a ceasefire in Gaza in return for the release of Israeli hostages, saying, it's time for this war to end and winning a positive initial reaction from Hamas. The first phase involves a six-week ceasefire when Israeli forces would withdraw from all populated areas of Gaza, some hostages, including the elderly and women, would be freed in exchange for hundreds of Palestinian prisoners. Palestinian civilians could return to their homes in Gaza and 600 trucks a day would bring humanitarian aid into the devastated enclave. In this phase, Hamas and Israel would negotiate a permanent ceasefire that Biden said would last as long as Hamas lives up to its commitments. If negotiations took more than six weeks, the temporary ceasefire would extend while they continued. In the second phase, Biden said there would be an exchange for all remaining living hostages. Including male soldiers, Israeli forces would withdraw from Gaza and the permanent ceasefire would begin. The third phase would include a major reconstruction plan for Gaza and the return of the final remains of hostages to their families. It's time for this war to end and for the day after to begin, said Biden, who is under electioneer pressure to stop the Gaza conflict, now in its eighth month. Hamas, which Biden said, received the proposal from Qatar. Release a statement reacting positively. Hamas said it was ready to engage positively and in a constructive manner with any proposal based on a permanent ceasefire, withdrawal of Israeli forces. The reconstruction of Gaza, a return of those displaced, and a genuine prisoner swap deal if Israel clearly announces commitment to such deal. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's office said he had authorized his negotiating team to present the deal. While insisting that the war will not end until all of its goals are achieved, including the return of all our hostages and the destruction of Hamas military and governmental capabilities. Separately, the Israeli military said its forces have ended operations in North Gaza's Jabalia area after days of intense fighting, while probing further into Rafa in South Gaza to target what they say is the last major Hamas redoubt. The conflict began on October 7 when gunmen led by the Islamist Palestinian group stormed into southern Israel on motorcycles, paragliders and four-wheel drive vehicles, killing 1,200 people and abducting more than 250. According to Israeli tallies, Israel then invaded the Gaza Strip in what Netanyahu has called an effort to destroy Hamas, the militant Palestinian group that seized control of the area from the Fatah Palestinian faction in a violent struggle in 2007. Talks mediated by Egypt, Qatar and others to arrange a ceasefire between Israel and Hamas have repeatedly stalled, with each side blaming the other for the lack of progress. In his speech, Biden called on the Israeli leadership to resist pressure from those in Israel who were pushing for the war to go on indefinitely, a group he said included some in the Israeli governing coalition. They want to occupy Gaza. They want to keep fighting for years and hostages are not a priority for them. Well, I've urged leadership in Israel to stand behind this deal, despite whatever pressure comes. He added. He implored Israelis not to miss the chance for a ceasefire. As the only American president who has ever gone to Israel at a time of war, as someone who just sent the U.S. forces to directly defend Israel when it was attacked by Iran. I ask you to take a step back, think what will happen if this moment is lost, he said. We can't lose this moment. The Gaza war has put Biden in a political bind. On the one hand, he has long been a staunch supporter of Israel and would like to ensure funding and support from the pro-Israel community in the United States in his November 5 election rematch against Republican former President Donald Trump. On the other, 
progressive elements of Biden's Democratic Party have grown increasingly angry at the president for the suffering the conflict has caused civilians in Gaza. Palestinian health authorities estimate more than 36. 280 people have been killed in Gaza since Israel attacked, and the United Nations says over a million people face catastrophic levels of hunger as famine takes hold in parts of the enclave. Signaling a U.S. effort to build support for the proposal, the State Department said U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken spoke with his Jordanian, Saudi and Turkish counterparts. Speaking to the Turkish foreign minister, he emphasized that Hamas should accept the deal and that every country with a relationship with Hamas should press it to do so without delay. The State Department said. In a sign of support for Israel, despite the partisan divide in the United States, leaders of the Democratic-led U.S. Senate and of the Republican-led House of Representatives on Friday invited Netanyahu to address a joint meeting of Congress. The week has been dominated by the fallout from an Israeli airstrike in Rafah on Sunday that killed 45 Palestinians. The Palestinian people have endured sheer hell in this war. Biden said on Friday, We all saw the terrible images from the deadly fire in Rafah earlier this week.